what is that guys welcome yet to another video and today we have the legend himself mr paul killick in the house um Yo. we'll have a guys? little chat about um the film we're doing at the moment about twinkle twinkle about the single web where, where paul's writing at the moment for the film um and just basically have a a, a cool little chat really but we we'll probably have a chat here's a little um a montage of why paul is so great Oi, oi, hello, my name is Paul, nice one. I am true, and I'll tell myself it's fine to be alone. It's the one and only Eagle Double G. No, no, no. Also, put your hands together for the amazing Paul Kenny. Yeah. Well, Paul. So, I think I've called out the table for you. Come on, mate. Right, we'll start by building up the fiver. Come on, mate. Anyway, how are you? I'm good, you know. You obviously treat you the... Uh, current climate out there Carlo it's uh it's a mad world at the moment but you know like everyone else we're down every day at a time so yeah but other than that keeping busy in the house mm. wife's got me doing things loads of gardening and everything else while this uh, <laughs> sun is beaming out there so yeah, yeah definitely all good, all good sir yeah all brilliant good. brilliant so and, uh, the end, right? yeah same boat same boat um she's got me yes. she's got me doing stuff I'm not saying I'll do it but yeah, we've been out, the, <laughs> been out in the garden for the last couple of days, enjoying the nice sunshine and um, sort of sticking to the sort of isolation rules. But yeah, just trying to be happy and just get on with it. And hopefully soon this crap will blow over and uh, we can move on with um, normal life, really. Yeah, absolutely. The more to say the more we do it the more we stick to the rules the quicker it is to be over with so that's Definitely. the way we look at it now so let's start at the beginning films yeah what got you into movies i mean what was the first film you ever watched the throw that one out first eight. film what yeah so i can think, remember that like you can remember what made what gave you the love of film what was like oh my the god I know it's a stupid question, but we've got to start somewhere. <laughs> no, no, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, I mean, it would, it would, would after first film, I actually really sat down and enjoyed watching as a, as a youngster was probably, I would say, I would say it was probably Rocky II, mm. uh, in all honesty. And it was um, it kind of it kind of stood out to be honest with you. When I watched it, I hadn't even seen the first one. Mm. Um, that's as far back as I can remember. Other films and that, but what really gave you that feel good factor, like you know, I mean, mm. that sort of champion of films. It was the the rematch, the rematch of Apollo Creed. It was you know out there. So that was you know, that was a cracking, probably one of the best out of a lot of them. If I'm all honest with you, but I'm sure other people would disagree. But you know. Mm -hmm. That was on me, and that's what really got me the love for it. Um, and then there was, like, you know, the, the infamous E.T. film, and, you know, and then it just went on from there. I watched a lot of westerns, obviously, with my grandfather and whatnot, you know, I made a lot of John Wayne films. Clint Eastwood being my favourite at all-time actor, mm -hmm. um, catalogue of films, you know, um, and, yeah, it just went on from there, really. So recent it. stuff or early stuff with Clint? Ah, uh, I'd say definitely like some of these early stuff. I mean, these early stuff, the Westerns go without saying, you know what I mean? Um, you know, obviously the the uh, the uh, Fistful of Dollars, you know what I mean? The Good, the Bad, the Ugly, you know. Um, Don't forget my favourite, Power Rider. is my favourite Clint Eastwood uh, film. Now, Power Rider is, that is a... Definite, uh, definite um, classic. Yeah, yeah, to be honest, Unforgiven, um, brilliant absolutely. movie. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm given these later later stages. Yeah, I mean, you know, sick. It, it's he got an Oscar for it, didn't he? Let's be honest. It's it was an absolute cracking mm. uh, film. Um, as I say, as as time went on, you know, the, the films just become bigger and bigger. You know, especially that growing up in the eighties, eighties films, mm. no doubt. You know, what I mean, when you see like you know the Masters of the Universe, and if you look back at them now. I think they are proper like. I was actually at a holiday not... camp. I was actually at a holiday camp. Uh, my mum took my mum paid for me to go to a holiday camp. Me and my sister, and I remember they had um, it, Master of the Universe literally just come out in the cinema, and a holiday yeah. camp had a little cinema in the holiday camp, and I remember that was one of the first films that I'd actually seen on a big screen, and it wasn't oh, even a big that? screen. That was Master of the Universe, and I fell in love with it. I thought that was an excellent film. That was, um, that's, that was, you know, that film. You, you had like a Howard the Duck and all that. And, Howard, you know, what well, soundtrack? Yeah, yeah, and and to be honest with you, then you had like you know the old the eighties, like we used Breakfast Club, um, you know, Pretty in Pink and all them, and you know Ferris Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and mm. you know these sort of eighties Rat Pack films as you were growing up was coming towards like you know sort of round about that time between eight and. 10 years of age and then moving onwards. It was all those great films that just I loved. I absolutely loved it. I mean, if you look back at films then, to the way they are now, obviously technology has come a long way. Mm. Visual effects come a long way since then. Um, but I don't know, there's just something that draws you back to those films as classics. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? If you if you look at the old, I mean, you look at the likes of E.T., um, the Never Ending Story and stuff like that, you know, uh, Dark Crystal, you know, all these like typical, like, you know, some of the puppeteer films, like, you know, and coming forward with Labyrinth. everything that you have now. Exactly. You know, it's, you know, all that was the work, the, the effects that went into those works, those films, to what it is now mm. at the touch of a button. I'm not saying it's easier, you know what I mean? Obviously, because a lot of work still goes in it as you, yeah. you're fully aware of that, you know what yeah. I mean? The, what you do so you know but as i say with, with films now i mean you, you know just getting better and better and it's becoming more and more advanced now and yes there are still some uh some turkeys out there but yeah. you know at the same time but the crazy thing is it is getting more and more advanced i totally agree but it's getting more yeah. and more easier to do it from home to achieve yeah, yeah. these effects from home years ago i'm probably going probably back maybe the beginning uh, of the uh, uh, 20, 21st century, so 2001 to sort of like 2004, and then back, it was physically impossible to achieve phys- visual effects unless you had a hundred million pounds budget and stuff like that, and the tools which were, I mean, PCs back then to make, to do editing for a start were like tens of thousands of pounds, like tens of thousands of pounds. So as it's got more and more advanced, it's funny how it's got more and more easier for the independent filmmaker to actually do it himself, which is, yes, which is and crazy. I mean, and that's where, I mean, obviously I've, I've learned, I mean, I've, I've, I like my films, as you know, we've mm. had many discussion. I like my films, um, like yourself, but to actually, to actually see it being done personally, like you, with, with yourself and being a, a be, seeing, bring us forward to sort of like, you know, in Twinkle mm. and being a part of, that that film and seeing the actors that were on there and learning a lot from those actors, mm. learning a lot from yourself and then seeing what happens behind the screen as well. It, it certainly does open your eyes, mm. you know what I mean, to certain certain aspects of of the film genre. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, love, I love it, absolutely love it. But you don't you don't realise when you watch when you watch the making of you know like all of these films that you have a making of most of them. And you watch the making of, and you think, "Oh wow, yeah, that's really interesting." Blah blah blah. But to actually be a part of that mm. is uh, is is something else. Like, you know, what I mean, it, it really is. Yeah, I mean, I just sort of changed my view and perception on what I think is a bad film and what I think is a good film ever since I started mm. making films. You know, yeah, because yeah. I used to, you know, have a really sort of hard opinion on certain films. I think, you know, they yes. did that shit, they did that rubbish, they did this rubbish. But now, do you know what? I appreciate all films because I know how much hard work it is that's and what goes into it. That's right. When people say about um, 
and I'm not sorry, when I said about like, obviously they they're like turkeys being out there. What I mean by that is that people's perception of oh yeah, no, that wasn't a very great film, but you don't realise the hard work goes into that. It certainly made me appreciate mm. um, films that um, I thought that were that were, weren't as great as such. Like, you know what mm. I mean? It's it's kind of um, it's you know the, the old high idea. You know you you start thinking about you know the old remakes and stuff like that where yeah. people start a remake. The other day I was having a conversation with my daughter the other day, Lauren, and. Um, she um she was saying that you know they're, they're doing that they're, they're bringing out a new Charlie's Angels mm. and they brought out a new Charlie's Angels and I thought to myself okay um is it with obviously Lucy Liu Cameron Diaz yeah. and that and you know Drew Barrow no no it's a complete new cast and I thought oh we have another we have another remake here you know what I mean a remake of a remake of a film that was a series a TV mm. series and you think oh you know should they have left it alone but now you know as I look at these films and I think to myself, you know, you've got to give them a chance. Mm. You know, you do have them a chance and mm. you just understand the amount of hard work that gets put into it. It's an honour, isn't it? Think now, it uh, yeah, it certainly changed my opinion anyway of, of, um, of actually, uh, obviously, obviously, obviously slating a film mm. and saying, all right, okay, an absolute dreadful film, didn't like that. Everyone has an opinion, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'm sure we'll have more to come in the future, but... You know, at the end, you've got to appreciate, you know, hold on a minute, that's a lot of hard work gone into that production. Mm. In the stand, there's a lot of hard work gone into the production. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of behind the scenes work. Yeah. And you don't un- un- appreciate that. Just like if you're doing on stage, if you're doing stage shows, you know, like in the theatres and stuff, like whether they're big West End theatres or whether they're small local production theatres, mm. you know, you always you know that there's a lot of hard work going to it and, you know, yeah. it's made me appreciate it more, to be honest with you, Carlos. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely agree with you on that. I saw um, an interesting post yesterday on Facebook that apparently um, they're remaking Jaws with Steven Spielberg and James Cameron producing. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know I mean, what it's going to be like crazy. because going back to when they did the original Jaws, even though it was mostly practical, I mean... The shark, hence his name was Bruce, um, was fully practical. And it looked absolutely incredible to this day. I've never seen a shark yeah. film that... I'm not saying they're bad, but I've never seen a shark film actually top the realism of Jaws when it comes to that shark. Jaws, yeah. I think the only thing I've seen closest to that, to be honest with you, Carlo, um, um, you know my opinions about the uh, Sharknado films. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we won't go into that. <laughs> um, but it's the Deep Blue Sea. Um, that was a good film, fans. but you could see, you could see it was digital. Um, yes, yes, you could. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The the, uh, the you know the, obviously the CGI in that as well. You know, it's it was it was what it was to that. But going back to a classic film like Jaws, I don't think you you, you can you can no. touch them films in respect for the authenticity of of one. The sharks and to how the realism is, um, yeah. you know, on, on on the film is like, you know what I mean. So, you know, I would love to, is, I would love to yeah. not them, I would love them for not them to remake it, but make a sort of fresh take on it, um, and yeah. bring back Richard Dreyfuss because he's the only, uh, you know, surviving cast member really, main cast member mm. who played uh, Hooper, bring him back as. As, as the lead of the film, that would be, I think that would be awesome if they brought him back. I think it's great to see a nice cameo appearance, isn't it? You know what I mean? Mm. It's we, we all sort of look forward to it for a remake. I like a remake that has its own, um, has its own twist on things. Uh, you know, like a, they, 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 they do the remake, but they also bring a little twist to it also. Do you get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. At the same time, I mean, we rented a film uh, the other day um, off of, on digital, off of the, uh, the, the, the Virgin Box, and um, it was called 21 Bridges. I've seen it. And it was... Have you seen I've it? I've seen with, it. Um, Chad... Yeah, brilliant film. Really good film. Absolutely fantastic film. I have I really enjoyed that film. That was a good and, film. And um, it's, you know, of, of its late, of, of its late, you know what I mean? It's, it's a film where, you know, you've seen other films with that similar... On take, but you've never seen that. I've never you've never seen a plot the way that was. That had a twist to it. 
had a wicked you know, twist to it. But yeah, corruption in the police force and stuff like that. But to see the way... True story. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, but um, spoiler alert there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if um, and we also we also watched one the other day about um, the, uh, the 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 late great uh, Judy Garland. It's called Judy. I've not seen it yet. Yeah, You've seen that one? No, I've not seen um, it yet. No, it was. I'll tell you what, it, it, so I, I, guys. I recommend it. Whoever's um, watching uh, us today, um, I, I recommend it. It's a great film. It's such a powerful uh, take on um, a certain part of Judy Garland's life and why she was. She was known as a bit of a diva, but to be honest with you, you can kind of understand why coming from a child actor up in from the Wizard of Oz up to the obviously an adult and the reason why. For where it was instilled. So, once again, I'm not without saying too much. Great film, great mm-hmm. film. So yeah, all these all these films that are, that are being made. You know, the the the, the uh, obviously the uh, uh, the films where we, you know, the biographical films. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're uh, you know you've had the Queen one uh, with Freddie Mercury. Obviously, yeah. um, also you've had uh, the uh, Rocket Man. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Elton John. Um, you, you know, different ones that have come out recently, and you think, oh, wow, well, yeah, these, these are good takes. They're good films. Yeah. You know what I mean? But all across the board, you know, it's just getting the industry is getting fiercer and fiercer. It is. Uh, also, it's getting a wider range, do you understand? Yeah. And I think that's where it's making the industry so much more optional now. Yeah. You know, you can't not turn and whether it be Amazon Prime, whether it be now, uh, obviously Sky, whether it be uh, Netflix now, you know, you go to all these different platforms that you can watch these films on and you're not short of anything now. TV series, it's just the whole filming genre now of whether it be a TV series, whether it be a film being made, you know, it is such a wide range now. Coming from back in the day to, you know, from... I don't know, the twenties up until now, how films come along, it's just an amazing journey, to be honest with you. So, so let's go back to a year ago. Twinkle, twinkle. Yeah. Ah, um, yes. Twinkle, twinkle. Uh, um, here's yeah. a little, here's, I'm just going to, here's a little clip with Paul in uh, Twinkle, Twinkle. For years after his brother went missing, the guy's unstable. Please, Dad, you promised I love him and I'm going to marry him with or without your blessing if you could just go and talk to him and don't mention about his past okay look that's what worries me but look sweetheart if he makes you happy who am i to stand in the way dad dad can i get this scary game please dad says i can't have it I told you once before, Tom. No game. As filmmakers, we did learn a lot. What's your take on that? I mean, what's your take on the whole, that whole sort of thing? Um, I think I think it was from quite quite some harsh criticism. To be honest with you, um, it was a fantastic cast. Um, I learned a lot from the cast. Um, everyone on the on, on the cast there who you took me under the, their wing. Um, as you know, for me, it was the first time in front of a camera, mm. um, and yeah, I, I thought I thought the criticism was quite harsh of the film, considering it was an independent, independent virtually low budget film. Very um, low budget. I thought it was a well made film. Yeah, you know, we we yeah we 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 worked worked very hard on it. Um, it even the, the main cast characters in there, they worked very hard um, to bring that film to the platform that it was mm. and to be honest with you it's at the end of the day as once again all films may not be everybody's cup of tea but we felt that it was a good film it was a very uh put to get well put together film well written the script was brilliant mm. i mean you know it it was what it was it was a horror story mm. you know but it had a, a slight comedy edge to it which I think made, you know, comedy edge as such, like, you know, the one-liners and, you know, the characters, how it was, 
it, and it was dark. But the twist, guys, for you who haven't seen the film, um, it's on Amazon Prime right now for rent or buy. Uh, give it a go. Twinkle, twinkle, it's fantastic. Um, I'm proud of that film. Yeah, I've, yeah. You know, it was the first. You know, I'd done some. Um, um, I'd done a, a stage show prior to that for um, for uh, obviously one of our cast members in the wrong Richard Borman, um, who directed Tom Dick and Aaron. And, um, and I played a Russian uh, uh, human trafficker. Mm. And uh, that was quite quite a thing for me because, you know, we'd done a three-night stint where there was like, you know, 80 to 100 people mm. sitting in these, uh, these uh, crowds. Like, you know, that I mean, must have been terrifying. You know, it was very terrifying, but it was so enjoyable because it was the, you know, that when you go into the stage, now no one has seen what this, the character was, Boris, this character that I was playing, mm. um, no one had seen him. No one had known um, what he looks like. Everyone's talking him up in the actual uh, play. And then, you know, towards the end there, it's door, ring, doorbell rings, opens the door, and it's the reaction. And you, it's not because you're not looking at the crowd. Mm. Yeah, you can't see anyone out there, mm. but you can hear it. And it's the glass, <gasps> you know, that sort of, and that was such a buzz. And it gives you an even more stride mm. to do it. You know, I mean, it gives you, there's sort of not really much room for mistakes there. Mm, mm. So you're, the pressure is on you. You know, I mean, it's the same as for Twinkle. You know, being in front of the camera, you want to do, give it your best. You know what I mean? You're 100% all. And I was nervous, as you are fully yeah, aware, yeah. Carla. You know, I mean, I wasn't nervous. But um, the likes of, you know, the likes of Cassie, the likes of Lee, Charlie, and the Davis, those guys, they all, they all kept me sort of, you know, where I needed to be, mm. don't be frightened. Don't be, you'll be all right, like you know what I mean. And you're the guy, and obviously the direction from yourself. Uh, um, I loved every minute of that film. Yeah. Um, it certainly is. And um, obviously, as you can see, just up behind me there, the poster. I just promote that there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very there. proud of it because we went in it's with true. a really low budget. We never used production equipment on that. We never used cinema cameras on that. We used. Like, you know, I've said quite a few times in, in on my videos, we use a Panasonic G7, which is an off-the-shelf camera um, with, you know, ch cheap equipment. Um, and, and we made a film. Um, and I always look back at it and think, you know, I, I did take it hard when we, we did get the criticism. But, you know, I'm all, I'm all for constructive criticism all day long. But I thought to myself, do you know what? How many people have done that? How many people have gone out and made... A, you know, nearly a two-hour film, you know, on, on, on low-budget equipment and, and released it, had a premium and released it. You know, we set a goal and, and we achieved that goal. Yes, it's not perfect. Um, I will, as a director, always admit that, but it doesn't stop me being proud of it. You know, it's, you know as we saw, it's on my wall now. You know, it's here, you know. You know. Here it is. Do you know what I mean? It's there. So we're moving on now to the wrong, um, which is probably the most ambitious and the biggest thing we've ever done because the production value is going to be absolutely through the roof on this. This one is, um, we're using cinema camera on this one. If you haven't seen the trailer, check the trailer out. Uh, links in the description. And yeah, I think we're going to smash it out of the park. So the wrong when you first received the script because I, I kept the script quite quiet didn't i how did you feel about you the script uh, yeah well i mean i mean coming off the bat twinkle um at the start, i weren't expecting it so obviously you know we had we had the um <laughs> we had the premiere in october you know um for uh, twinkle and that was like fabulous right okay straight away once the premiere had finished you know the day after mm. it was what what am i going to do now what am i going to do now where, where are we going with this and then because you had that whole year seven. didn't you well how, how long did you have about six months of being part of twinkle was it six yes, months yeah it was it was yeah because i i joined the production in march last year yeah in march last year oh well the end of february i think it might have been end of February, um, through, obviously, through uh, Cassie Wilson, uh, who recommended me to Lee, and Lee obviously spoke to you concerning about it, Lee Banton, and mm. I spoke to you about it. And um, 
it was like, yeah, bring him along, we give him a go. Mm. Um, and as I say, coming off the back of that, and yeah, it was it was about it was about six months into that, um, and yeah, it was for you know as soon as that finished, it was like a case of like you know what what what, what am I going to do now? You know where does this go? I mean, this is wow. Oh, I've got I'm actually I'm in a film that's on Amazon Prime now. Mm-hmm. You know, we've had a premiere. It felt if this is if this is what it's all about. And then before you know it, it was like okay, Paul, oh, listen, if Serpov came along and. Gosh, we had a script, yeah. and this was it. And this is where we were going. You know, in the January, we were sitting down for our first meeting, and gosh, there we were having it. We were, we, we've got a script in front of us, and, um, you know, obviously we had a prior conversation to that yeah. and about the character. And, yes, my character, I am just so, so excited. Um, he was for written character. for you. He was written for you. That character was written for you, up uh, uh, absolutely hundred percent. But the script, the script to the film throughout. I mean, from start to finish, you know, we, we have got some some amazing castmen that, in fact, all the, of the cast. Uh, it, it's it's out there. The scale of this movie is about two hundred times bigger than Twinkle. It's massive. And, um, and exactly. So, I mean, and looking at look at looking at the actual um, uh, looking at the actual. Uh, well, the, the caliber of, of obviously who you have you've got you've got um, actors of uh, coming in like you know new actors who are coming in who are new to it mm. um, and also some very experienced actors who have films and stage plays under their their belts and you know it's 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 just seeing all of them when we had the rehearsals um, and just seeing them, everyone at work it was enjoyable and it was it was so it was so you know, exciting to see and so interesting to see other people mm. making them characters their own. And this is what's going to happen with the wrong. Yeah. Um, I have no doubt in a million, a million percent that this is going to absolutely be hit out of the park with this film. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, you've been putting so much into it and you've, you know, with the direction that you've put, Carlo, um, and, and the script, we're all taking the script and we're all adding little parts to it and making those those uh, those those characters our own. And mm. I think everybody's so excited for it, to be yeah. honest with you. So, and that's what I yeah. want. That's what I want. I want people to bring their own um, sort of, you know, tint to the film, their own je ne sais pas, as fucking Doughboy would say. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I want them to bring their own, <laughs> their own trace ensemble. <laughs> but yeah I, I do you know what I, I am nervous about it i am really i mean the first meeting we had i was shaking well i've got parkinson's so shake anyway so i don't notice so you can't really notice whether i'm nervous or not because it's just me but i was i was bricking it because it's such a big cast it's such a big cast um and we're still you know looking at other people at the same time like as well which I'm going to speak to you about a little later on. I had a little brainwave. Um, so we'll talk about that sort of off camera because I don't want to sort of spoil it. But yeah, I mean, I think as a director, I am I am a bit nervous about it because there, it is a complicated script. It is quite, and there's so much going on in this film. There's so many set pieces and there's so many locations in this film. It is unreal, but we're there. Apart from what's going yeah. on now, we can't get out of film. Um, we're there. Um, I'm ready to sort of go. We have started filming technically um, when we started shooting the teaser trailer. Some of the bits from yeah. um, the teaser will actually appear in the film. Um, we did the teaser just to um, give the audience something. Do you know what I mean? So um, what, what's your take on your character then? I mean, without giving too much away... Um, are you are you nervous about playing him, David, the juicer? No, your name's your name's uh, not David. I'm thinking about Twinkle Twinkle now. <laughs> your name yeah, was David yeah, in Twinkle yeah, Twinkle. Yeah, Twinkle. Your name's Jason yeah, yeah. in not Jason Voorhees. We, Jason, your name's Jason the juicer yeah, in yeah, um, the role. Yeah. Jason, uh, yeah. I mean, this 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 is it's obviously gonna be for me. It's obviously gonna be a lot cha- more challenging than uh, than David was in. Uh, in Twinkle, um, for obvious reasons. Um, I think the most, 
side of it is it's that that whole split. Um, how can I put it without to giving too much away? The whole split. The sad personality. Uh, yeah, the, the split, split split personality of it. You know, we're we're talking about um, you know a killer. Mm. Um, without giving too much away, we're talking about a killer who's you know who's evil in his own way, um, but it's also an understanding of why. Mm. So on his part, whether the actual audience agree with that is a different uh, is a different thing. But as I say, that's left for the audience to decide. It is it is challenging. I'm trying to, as you as you're fully aware, there are certain things that have. That have, that have concerned me. Um, there are certain things where I've had to play a character and be, uh, sorry, play this character, uh, rehearse as the ca- this character and be a, um, it, sometimes I look back on the video and it, and it was quite upsetting, only for the fact that, that how deep I had to go in order to, to bring this to life. Um, this character is, is yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it's going to be, He's sinister, isn't he? He's really sinister. It's, it's sinister. It's a sinister character, but this is what... It's, it's going to work. It's it, all day long. I mm. mean, you know, no thought of on your right in there because the, the character you've you've gave us... You've given us each a character. Mm. The character you've given me in order to make it my own has been... It's, it's a personal one. It's very personal to me for the fact that I've, you know... This has to be spot on. Mm. You know, I've not given a much, a much, a much away about what it is. You know, including certain a certain language that I have to speak in it as well. I have to do my research on that as well. Mm. You know what I mean? And to be careful exactly what I was saying. You understand? Yeah. So that for me was quite that was quite uh, challenging, um, but at the same time enjoyable because it was intri- intriguing. It's given me an opportunity to watch quite a few films surrounding that. Research, that yeah. So, yeah, I mean, for me, um, a very challenging character, but a very interesting and sinister character that I believe that I will pull off and I will, you know, can't wait to bring it to the big screen, to be honest with you. I really can't. It's going to be amazing. And this is going to be your first time in full latex as well. Full makeup, latex. How do you feel about that? <laughs> um, yeah, nervous, nervous. You know, I mean, there's there's uh, there's um, there's not much you could do to this face for it to not change <laughs> as beautiful as it already is. Like, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> it's, uh, oh, he's so vain. Look at me. Uh, no, I mean, to be honest with you, Carlo, it's um, it is it is. It's, it's, I can't wait. I really am the looking forward to it. The experience is going to be amazing. Yeah. You, know, you know, the, the guy that we've got in looking for it and the makeup on set, big shout out to Abby there as well, who uh, was responsible for the makeup on our teaser trailer. Um, Abby Kendall, yeah. It was amazing. You know, I can't wait to see what the, uh, the, the full latex is and the final character is. Um, oh, I can't wait. As well. I can't wait. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And there's a lot of, um, there is going to be a lot of practical effects in this film. Um, we sort of, sort of tried to step away from digital a little bit. Um, because I do prefer, prefer practical over digital. Um, there were some digital effects in it. Um, you know, you know, to hide the, hide the, what's the mode, the little errors and stuff like that, obviously. Uh, but most of this phase, I would say about 90% of this film is, uh, is practical. Uh, which is incredible, and I think it looks it's going to look insane. It's going to look absolutely amazing. If I could ask you a yeah. question, um, how did you feel? How did you feel uh, about the the teaser trailer, the filming that we went into on the teaser trailer? How did you feel that that would that that, that would um, expand once you got on set and started rolling with the film? How did you feel that you could you, you could add that, especially with the new equipment as well? Um, to me, it was to see. To me, it was mostly for tone. The tone of the film, you know, mm-hmm. you know, it gave me an opportunity to say, right, you know, I selected a particular camera, uh, which most of you know is the the BMMCC, um, I, because of its form factor and what it could do for us. 
So we never, I, I never went to myself, right, I, I want an 8K camera, so on and so on. I wanted to get a camera to do what it needs to do to make this production work. Um, so making a teaser trailer for me was to test out the tone of the film, to see if this camera could really make the film look as grimy um, and as, as, as um, disturbing as I wanted it to be. So, and, it, and I think it lived to its expectations uh, quite well, you know. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, Absolutely. It, it looks incredible, um, the image. I mean, it's not 8K or 6K, but it is blooming high quality. Um, and, yeah, I think, I think that was the idea of the teaser. One, to give the whole cast a little... Because some of, we've not worked together yet, apart from me and you. Um, the whole crew have not worked together yet. So it was a chance for the whole crew or most of the crew to sort of get together, bond, and get a rough idea of what it's going to be like on set. You know, mm-hmm. and, and, and how I work and for me to see how they work, you know. And it was a good experience. It was a good laugh and it was a good experience as well at the same time. So we know now, as you know, I don't know, most of you should know by now that Paul is actually the assistant director on the wrong part one and two. So it's it's a chance for also Paul to see what it's going to be like to, you know, s- sit in the throne and, and say, right, we need this like this, we need that like that. Sometimes I do get a bit touchy with things. That's my only sort of downfall. Um, I do get, because there's so much going on in my head when I'm directing yeah, yeah. something, I'm not only, you know, you know, looking at how the frame looks, I'm looking at how the sound looks, I've got Premiere Pro literally in my head, the timeline, how I'm going to piece it all, because I'm doing the editing as well, how I'm going to piece it all together, you know, have we got enough batteries in the camera, is the battery lasting long enough, is the battery lasting in the in the audio recorder, you know, the lighting, oh, right, we've got the lights on, the lights have been on for like two hours now, do we have enough battery to last for the rest of the shoot, so there's so much going on in my head, it's insane, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so... Yeah. Get, it's a lot going on so getting back to your question bringing the teaser to life it gave me it gave me the opportunity to say right i know how things are going to work on set right now i know that maybe you know even though we've got loads of batteries maybe i need to buy some more batteries for the camera maybe i need to buy say three more batteries for the lights you know so when we actually do get on a complete day shoot we don't worry we just go leave things powered on yeah we could just go for it and not worry about things like that so it was a sort of a way for me not only to get a, a teaser trailer out there for people to enjoy but to test the waters as well to test it all make sure everything goes according well, to plan. Yeah, it is, is going to be um, awesome so we've just had our little um got our little water waters we're both mm-hmm. we're both trying to keep healthy in this lockdown um, Absolutely. Trying to keep healthy, which is good. So, uh, going back to uh, the wrong, um, we've got an amazing cast. Um, couldn't be proud of the cast. So, I'm going to try and shout people out. I'm, I know this is where I'm going to forget everyone's name. Okay? So, you might need to back me up on this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, we've we obviously got our amazing assistant director, Paul Killick, who's playing the juicer. Um, we've got Robert De Bruin, who's playing DCR Clark. Uh, we've got Richard Borman, who's playing uh, uh, Detective Harper. We've got Lauren Killick, who's playing DCR Slater. We have uh, Cameron Mack, who's playing Lee. Um, we have Rico White, who is... Um, uh, um, what do you call him? Uh, forensics. Forensics. He's, he's one of the, he's, he's the forensic scientists, isn't he? That's what he will be, or yep. forensic... Uh... So we've got Abby Kindle, who's playing um, She is <laughs> <laughs> I don't know my own cast. Abby Kindle is playing um, Jennifer's mum, um, yeah, in a film and Oh, oh blimey. That's terrible. No, that is absolutely terrible. <laughs> Oh my god, that is bad. That's terrible. 
Um, I'm going to a blank. Oh my god. Jazz. Yeah, We've forgotten our own cast. You can tell this is like. <laughs> I hope you can edit all this out, like, you know, like. No, I'm leaving it. It's quite funny, actually. <laughs> this, this is bad. Um, I can't forget. Casey's mum. Casey, Casey, Casey. I've got it, Casey. 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 Right, so Abby is playing Casey's mum. We've got Jennifer yes. Lane, who's playing Casey. We have um, Armed Police, uh, which is played by Jake Talvin. Um, Stephen Kennedy. Um, I am playing Chief Barnes, the boss. The boss, the, the boss, governor. The governor. Um, who else we got? We've got so many cast members. Who are we missing out? Oh, we've got um, Robert Durant. He's playing. He's playing prison warden. Um, yeah. We've got so many locations in this film. It's frightening. The amount of locations. Mm-hmm. We've got about twenty locations in this film. And they're all really sort of um, production quality through the roof on them. It's going to look amazing. Yeah, I mean, to be to be honest with you, it's um, it's it's very uh, uh, the, the cast liner is is truly amazing. Dan Spicer, I mean, yeah. sorry Dan, sorry Dan, Dan yeah, Spicer, Dan, father Dan. Dan. Spicer. Uh, Dan was actually Dan. in nineteen seventeen. All that good stuff. We got some people that have been in triple A movies. We ain't missing. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh, we've also got a uh, 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 Julian Gam. Uh, oh, playing. Julian. Julian. Uh, see, 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 no, when when, when you meet Julian, when you uh, meet Julian, strangers. when you meet Julian, and you see how how amazing of an actor this guy is. I mean, the 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 lines. I mean, the part he's got in this film is just going to bring the audience to their knees in this film because. This film is very, very, very sinister. Okay, so you're not going to see this on Disney Plus. Okay, it's a very sinister film, but it's got a lot of heart as well. It's got a lot of heart in it, um, which is great. It's got, yeah. it's got, it's got a strong, strong story. Um, we forgot one more. Dan Dugan playing Barry. Sorry, Dan. Uh, listen, listen, uh, it's uh, Dan. Listen, uh, we, we, we got, we got to leave that man until the. Uh... To the to the end there because we know now this guy is um, he's one of the best wow. actors I've ever seen. One of the yes, best actors I've ever seen. Is unbelievable. I mean, this guy is going to sh- send chills to the bone. Like there's, he's there's already caused quite, quite quite a lot of controversy in the in the trailer. Yes, people like. I mean, even oh the my god, is really, it's a very disturbing, uh, sinister character. Um, to see the guy at work is very, is very intriguing, but also very um, unnerving. There's the word that I would like to use for that because he is so good at switching into character mode and um, bringing what he has to bring. He's made Barry that his character. He, Barry's character. He's, he's made it his own. Oh. And to be honest with you, I cannot wait to see it on the big screen. It's it's going to look awesome. It yeah. really is. I can't wait to see it. I really can't. I mean, I was cutting. I was going through the all the footage that because we had quite a bit. We got we got quite a lot of footage the day we shot the teaser, and I was going through the footage and I was just looking at him and thinking, Jesus Christ, people are going to either hate this bloke or they're going to love this character. I think they're going to hate this character. That's the whole point of the film. Do you know what I mean? But he's going to get a lot of... I think he's going to get a lot of love from the horror community. You know? Mm-hmm. You know, the hardcore horror community, he's going to he's gonna knock it out of the park. You know? There's a lot... Yeah. Going back to Twinkle, there's a lot I wanted to do with Twinkle. Um, you know, with magazines and stuff like that. But I think leaving Twinkle the way it is you know, is the best thing to do because we yes. have not yes. we we have not shown what we really are capable of doing and hopefully in Twinkle people are gonna look and say, right, they made Twinkle, it's a cool little film, you know, they shot it on low budget equipment, um, but now the wrong is where the serious filming begins. Because it Twinkle to me was like my baptism by fire. It was my first feature film. Do you know what I mean? Um, it was it was scary doing it. Like I said, we used very low budget equipment, but 
we achieved something at the end of it. You know, we, we, we made a movie at the end of it. The thing with the... And, and we got Blu-rays, you know? We got Blu-rays. I don't know if that's in focus. You know, the Blu-rays. Yeah. The, the, you know? It's out on Amazon Prime. We've done something right. And it's got a hell of a lot of uh, uh, views on, on Amazon Prime. You know, it's still renting today. I mean, it's, it's been renting all morning, uh, which is fantastic. Mm. But I think, to me, Twinkle was my baptism. It taught me a lot. It taught me, you know... You know, how to sort of control cast, how to make sure I can get the best out of cast performance. There was errors, especially some errors with the audio uh, in the movie. I do know that. Um, but it was our first feature film. And this is what happens. I mean, if you go back to, you know, the 80s and you look at Peter Jackson and you look at Bad Taste. Yeah. The film yes. was horrendous. Now look at Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah, now yeah. look at the Planet of the Apes. You know? He's gone from... It shows, you know, it shows, it shows how far you can go as time goes on and what you learn. Um, and and to, to become that, uh, whether you're the, 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 the obviously the director, the writer, and everything else that goes with that. You know, as you know yourself, you've said that you there's certain things that you're doing with the wrong that you know that you wish you would have done in uh, Twinkle. in uh, Twinkle, but at the same time, as you say, Twinkle is uh, being there because it's it's it, it is selling, it is selling, it's it's coming, guys. You know, as I say, if you've got Amazon Prime Video, go onto Amazon or Amazon Prime, go onto there, it's Twinkle Twinkle. You can rent it or buy the film as such. Can I just point out as well that Carlo? has also uh, uh, directed a short film called Schizophrenia, and that can be seen on YouTube, I understand. And it's on Prime. Uh, and it's on Prime as, as, as well. So, um, and obviously that's also starring one of the cast members, Robert, uh, Robert De Bruyne as well. Um, and he, he's, uh, he's also uh, uh, starring that, as well as Carlo um, himself, making the appearance <laughs> in that film. Um, so, yeah, check that out as well. It's called Schizophrenia, guys. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, with Twinkle, going back to Twinkle, I mean, Schizophrenia was hilarious to do that. Like, I mean, it was so funny when we did that film because we started shooting it in one house and then we moved. And then once I moved to my new house, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 we have to refilm everything because we moved out. Um, that was a great experience. Twinkle, absolutely never forget it. It was my third film, you know. I've got so much love and it'll always be, this movie, will all, Twinkle will always have a soft spot in my heart. Or always have. Okay. Now, if you, go, if, you, if you go on Amazon Prime expecting Clive Barker, yeah, or you're expecting, you know, Toby, Toby, Hooper, Toby Hooper, or, or you know, a, a, a blockbuster horror film, then you're an idiot. But if you go in with a um, sense of, you know, this is a very low-budget film, you know, that we put together, then you should enjoy it. But don't go, yeah. You know, go into it with an open mind. That's all I'm, all I'm saying. So, um, I'll ask you a question. Obviously, on the uh, going back to the wrong, um, the without giving too much away, the the two cast members that are obviously central to the to the wrong uh, part one as well. Yeah, is obviously uh, is uh, obviously DCI Clark and uh, uh, Harper. Two DS um, Harper. Um, a very, um, a very, the way you put those two together, and the way you made their, uh, uh, made their uh, uh, characters connect the way they do. Um, what brought that idea to you to to have those those characters sort of bouncing off each other in one way, but also having that little sort of, you know, he kind of this is the 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 good cop, bad cop sort of scenario. I think, to me, it's like, everyone's different. Everyone's different. And I'll sort of relate it back to, it's my sort of homage to A Lethal Weapon, where you've got Riggs and Murtoch, you know, they're, they're both out to get the same results, but they're totally different people. But they still connect. And that's what I wanted for Harper and Clark. I wanted them to be totally different people with the same goal, but in a sort of different way. They wanted to sort of 
uh, achieve it in a different way. You've got Harper, which is a bit of a loose cannon, you know, really mm. doesn't care, you know. If he has to shoot someone to put them on their back, he will. Whereas Clark will keep going until he puts them in handcuffs. But Harper's totally mm. different. He just wants to, you know, if you've done something wrong, that's it, you've got to pay. You know, judge, jury, and executioner, if that sort of makes sense. So I wrote, I, I, I wanted to write them very different because they're, they're totally different people, you know? Everyone's different in the end, so I wanted to be very there is, different. Uh, it is strong, there is quite a strong, um, powerful um, uh, connection there of, of emotions. There's very mixed emotions of certain scenarios without giving anything away. Um, there's certain mixed emotions in the films where, you know, it is that scenario, as obviously Richard, Richard Borman, who's playing Harper, mm. um, said that, you know, he's got the back. He's, you have that element there for all the, for all you guys out there, or the older viewers as such. Yeah. Um, that I really take of, you know, Carter and Regan, like, you know, it's that, it's that, um, that pro kind of characters that have, have that connection, but there is a very, mm. it's a very twisted connection as such. Like, well, there, you know, that that's the governor. He's he's the, he's my governor. That's I have to follow that. But I also have an intent there where you have to kind of it reels in. I need to 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 be, you know, there's there's a bit of um, uh, how can I put it? There's a bit of uh, uh, adolescence there and such. Like, you know, what I mean? uh, yeah, that's it, it absolutely right. Me, and when I wrote him, when I wrote them two characters, so you've got two types of, when it comes to crime and things that are happening bad in the world, you've got two types of people. You've got the people that like to follow the law, yeah, and be like, oh, you just arrest him and, 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 and put him in handcuffs and, 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 and put him in prison. And then you've got the other side, which is, I'd shoot them. I'd shoot the effer. Do you know what I mean? I'd, I'd blow his head off. You've got two different people. So when I was writing them characters, I wanted the audience to have the best of both worlds so they could choose which yeah. character they really wanted to connect with. So are they going to connect with Clark because he does things the right way? Or are they going to connect with Harper because he just doesn't care? So you've got to, you know, when it comes to audience, for the audience in general, I wanted them to pick which way they wanted to go. So which path? Do they want to follow Clark's path in, in this journey or do they want to follow Harper's path? In this journey, if that makes sense. So that's yeah, yeah, what yeah. I really yeah, wanted for it. Is, you know, you, you've got that. You're opening up a pathway there for the two guys that obviously have one common goal. Obviously, there's no doubt about that. But they have a part. Each have a path where they're, you know, that they want. That they, you know, it's the 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 the, the audience. One of the audience would be like, you know, I can understand what Clark's coming from, especially where. You know, without we're not going to go into that obviously because of the uh, the uh, the script of the film. But at the same time, the actual uh, where Clark's coming in from, Clark's uh, 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 story there, and Harper's uh, own uh, uh, own uh, how can we put it? Um, he had his own. Story like street. Uh, he's got his own uh, demons. Yeah, yeah, he's got his own feelings that he knows that you know there's certain scenarios that have occurred because of X, Y, and Z, and then he, he, you know, he has to bring that, uh, bring that to light. And once again, I can't, you know, this it's going to be an amazing that uh, uh, these characters are going to be made their own. Um, well, that's you know, what I love uh, about it, and and, and, that, and that's uh, why. Sorry, sorry, go on, sorry, you said? I said that, that the, um, the, the, these characters, I think these guys are perfect for the parts, you know, Rob the Brand playing, um, uh, playing uh, Clark, um, and as we've already witnessed with the two of them uh, together, and obviously Richard Borman playing Harper. Um, I think these guys are just are, are on a calibre where they're going to mm. make these characters their own, and really, re you're going to see on screen exactly what we're talking about in this, yeah. in this conversation now. Yeah, and that's why I think I wrote a part two, because there's so much to explore. There's so much to explore with these characters. Um, I don't, I didn't think it was, because as I was writing it, I was thinking, Jesus, there's so much I can put in this movie 
that I don't think I'm going to get it. This movie's going to be, in, you know, five hours long. So that was what, why I decided to put it in two parts because there's more that I wanted to explore. I wanted to explore more with the Jesus character, you know, and these key characters in the film, which I, I just think is quite important. So moving on to the uh, single. Yes. You are writing a single, Two Wrongs, which is... How's, how are you finding that? Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's been a bit sort of challenging as such. Um, just putting down the lyrics, you know, as I say, the lyrics are, are good. It's going to be quite dark, uh, to be honest with you. Not, um, not in a way that's it's not understandable. It's going to be the element to what the film is. You know, it's a soundtrack. You know, and we we know that uh, it, it has a connection. You know yeah. what I mean? And this this is going to have a connection um, to the film. Uh, obviously, the score itself and the music written and uh, composed by yourself, Carla. And I must yeah. say, it is it's very uh, it's it's very intriguing. It's a very interesting uh, tune. Mm. Um, it's for me. Uh, the writing the song, you know, it is very, uh, very. It, it, it's going to be a personal, uh, personal thing for me. It's got to come straight from the heart, but with the film's interest in mind. Yeah. You know, and, you know. As I say, it's it's going to have it's going to have a reflection of what the, the the film is. You know what I mean? It's you know this the the, the track is going to be two, called Two Wrongs. Yeah. Okay, so, and in, in a standard world where you say, you know, two wrongs don't make a right, you know what I mean? It's absolutely spot on, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it, we know how this, um, the lane of lyrics down for this so far. Um, the first verse is down. Um, I will say that the first verse is down. Uh, I'm working on the chorus at the moment. Um, the chorus I've got, a, I've had sort of before I've done a verse anyway, yeah. um, but it's just tweaking it so it, Interact, you know. This is I, I need to. It's like writing a short story. Yeah. Basically, you know. What I mean, if you if you take a look at um, um, some great songwriters out there, and we've got any, but um, I'm a massive my my absolute um, uh, number one band are a, a rock band called Guns N' Roses, um, and there was a short story written by an author called Del James, and it's called Without You, and it's about rec- unrequited love, mm. and. Um, that was um, that was inspired uh, for the actual music video by the Guns N' Roses called November Rain, mm. um, and that got such good response. They got such a good response that you know before that they done obviously there was a tune that they done called Don't Cry, um, and then it was estranged. So those tunes that people don't know they're actually connected. Mm. Okay, they're actually connected, but the actual tune "November Ray by Guns N' Roses was inspired by a short story by Del James called "Without You." It's a book full of um, uh, different short stories, and this one in particular is called "Without You," um, and it's fantastic. So, trying to draw inspiration from the script and putting this on, so it is challenging, but at the same time, it's exi- exciting because there is so many avenues you, you can use. I've written a couple of songs. Myself, um, play a bit of guitar. Um, I ain't no Eric Clapton, but play a bit of guitar. You know what I mean? But and that's what's inspiring me to do so. Um, you have to sort of make get drawn into that level. You have to get drawn into the level of what you see on the script in order to do that. You know what I mean? And and for me, I, it's going to be great. You know what I mean? With with the music, I've already been given the tools uh, to work with. I'm obviously by yourself. Yeah. Um, as I say, the first verse is down, and but as I say, I'm keeping that very close to my chest right now. To be honest, <laughs> even I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. So it's gonna it's gonna be great. I mean, yeah, I've, I've you know <coughs> I've put the trust in order to do this, mm. you know, and especially um, you know the time that I, we do have on our hands, obviously due to the current climate in the world. Um, it's yeah, I've, I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Uh, ex- I'm, I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm pretty confident that this is gonna. It's gonna turn out well. You know, I'm sure there'll be tweaks here and there uh, to it that you you'll adjust to, and um, you know, we'll go from there. Um, but I just 
feel it's, it's an exciting project throughout from the film to the soundtrack i really am just excited about the whole thing yes we have gone through a delay at this time um um due to what's happening um but as i say uh you know you know rome wasn't built in a day carlo was it you know absolutely I mean? so, absolutely it, it's it's ex- stuff. it's exciting stuff so um, what are you a, a question go on go ahead. go 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 for it question for yourself the um the, the, the music, the music, um, uh, what inspired you uh, to do that particular score that you wanted for the two wrong soundtrack? Um, well, because it's, it's it's a very sort of sinister movie, I wanted to keep it... Uh, hang on, bear with me. It's time for me, someone's calling me, look, like, hang up. <laughs> um, I wanted to keep it as sinister as I possibly could. But not too sinister. So I sort of modelled it over sort of like a bit of Marilyn Manson from the film Spawn. Um, I gave it that sort of because obviously it's not it's not going to be nothing like Seven or The Exorcist. But this film is, in my eyes, a cross between Seven and The Exorcist. So I wanted to keep it as, as sort of dark as I possibly could. If mm. that makes sense. Does that does that make sense? So rock yeah, is yeah, yeah. rock is a sort of key, um, a key part of this film. You know, like I said, it's a sinister film. It's not a Disney film. It's not a like a hip hop film. It's nothing like that. This is a very dark and sort of grungy uh, sort of film. So we need to sort of. I needed to keep the music in tone with the actual I'm movie. The, so. I'm the smart track wise, yeah. yeah I mean, it, it's um, it's 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 kind of like um. Uh, people around, and, and as you know, on my, um, I've, I've, I've lately, lately discovered a band called a, a band called Disturbed, and um, and I just thought they were like, you know, my son. In fact, my son introduced me to them, and I thought they were just you know, one of these like really rah, 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 mm. that sort of that, that band. And then they, they aren't, they aren't, they aren't that at all. Mm. Um, they're very, they are quite heavy at times. Um, there was. A, uh, a few tunes out there that they've done. They've done a cover of like Simon and Garfunkel's The Sound of Silence, yeah. um, and it was absolutely amazing. Check that out, Sound yeah. of Silence. Sorry, plugging other people's songs. <laughs> um, but there's another tune that they do, if you can check out on YouTube, it's called The Vengeful One by this. Uh, and that has kind of sort of given me a bit of inspiration for this track, mm. to be honest with you, um, because it's. That track in itself, um, not related to what we're doing, but the track in itself has got a story behind it. Mm. You know, it's about the, the media culture um, out in the world, the media, um, TV, and what's being fed to people. You know what I mean? And that's someone who's just got so fed up with it. By saying that they're going yeah. to take, take it or they must take it out. Now, where in this, in, in the wrong, you have that sinister outlook of a story that's going on. There's... You know, you've got the story between, obviously, the police officers there, yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. and what they want and what they're trying to do. And then you had the story of the actual, uh, the, 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 the uh, character of Barry, um, which is, um, you know, very, very sinister, as we know. And then, obviously, my character, the juicer. Yeah. Um, so the audience are going to be drawn to that. So, and... That's what I'm saying is making a making a track and a score like you're doing throughout. It's going to be understandable. Mm. You know, it's 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 for the it's, it's for the the audience to understand. Wow, yes, that's that's exactly that. You know, there's going to be some high emotion. There is going to be some ups, downs. You know, twists, turns in this film where mm. people are going to be like, oh, blimey, just like you know, going back to Twinkle, the twist in Twinkle was absolutely out there. Yeah. Now, for me, I deliberately didn't obviously say to you, I wanted to know what happened in the yeah. film because I wanted to see that. And I was not expecting that at the end there. Yeah. And I won't um, spoil the end of Twinkle because there's viewers out there who haven't yet seen it. Um, it was amazing for me. Yeah. So uh, I was really excited about it. It was like, wow. And that's what this film is... Uh, this, the, the film wrong is is going to have the, the wrong is going to have that that element as well and 
you know, just it's a credit to the, 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 the uh, script writing that you've made there. So, yeah, part of this. I'm looking, for, I am, I'm, I'm enjoying putting it down, putting the track down, um, the lyrics to the track, and taking inspiration from different uh, different uh, songs where, you know, there's a story, and the story has to mean something. Mm. You know, it has, to, it has to have an element in there where you're writing a song for a track, and it brings it together, and eventually it does fall into places. You know, it at does. the end of the day, you have a verse, a chorus, a verse, a chorus. Yeah. You know that there it is. I can't wait That's for special. people to hear um, the single. I really can't. I mean, I have not heard the lyrics yet. This guy is keeping me on my toes yeah. with it, um, but I can't wait to hear yes. it. And when it's out, it'll be out everywhere. So it will be out literally on every single uh, streaming platform uh, there is. So this is going to be. Uh, amazing. So to wrap up, um, mm-hmm. what are you looking forward to the most about the wrong in general? What am I looking forward to the most? Yeah. Uh, the premiere. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's actually a really good answer. <laughs> um, to be honest with you, I'm just looking forward to getting going again. As I say, I can't, I know it keeps being um, spoken about, but obviously the current climate has you know, tempor- temporarily delayed um, production um, at the moment. And it's frustrating for uh, myself, um, yourself, all the cast members. Um, but, you know, what can we do? There's nothing to do it. But for me, I'm so just looking forward to getting back to it all ending and us being able to crack on with this production. I'm looking forward to the filming. I'm looking forward to... An amazing cast lineup and seeing what they do in front of the uh, the um, uh, obviously in front of the camera mm. as well as what goes on behind the camera. I'm just looking forward to everything that's um, going to be at it, and it's going to be epic. I, there's no doubt about. It. I know it sounds biased, um, and it pro- probably does. See, it probably is biased, to be honest with you. But um, to be honest, it's so much. Um, work that's coming into this yeah um, the prep know, work over your, this is amazing we're, we're all on it we're, we're all on this this train that you're driving and um, you know there's so many different ideas and so many different from different cast members that are bringing a certain touch to the production um, that is going to make it outstanding I think people are just you know yes it is frustrating at this moment in time because we just want to get going we want to mm. do this you know, we we want to be able to to to, to go in, but I can assure you, um, obviously, once the world has calmed down in a in a in a state that it is, um, we're gonna we're gonna make a film that's that's gonna get it's gonna make stuff, you guys sure proud. Hopefully, we're gonna make you all very very proud on this one, and um, yeah, I, yeah, I can't that's... wait to get started. We are delayed, like you said, but what can we do? We have to just get on with it, yeah. and you know, there's a lot more bad things happening in the world. Uh, rather than this film, yep. so we've got to think about um, everything. And it's just an opportunity for myself and Paul to send our love to everyone that's, you know, suffered with COVID-19 or you've lost someone. Also, a massive shout-out to our NHS health workers um, as well, um, all our yes. police force, um, our NHS, everyone that is doing such an amazing job uh, of keeping this country safe and keeping us safe. You mean the world to us. Uh, we love you very much, and you know, this is just for you, really. So, Paul, you've been amazing, my friend. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Giving us your, uh, some time today, and um, yeah, just want to uh, massive shout out to Carla, our director. Um, as um, as I say, it's been very uh, uh, it's been very frustrating for him with um, with the uh, with uh, the the the, the, uh, the delay of the production and whatnot, but. He made the uh, uh, he made the very uh, uh, dif- difficult choice at the beginning um, that was that was coming to us that we couldn't really wrap our yeah. heads around, and obviously he's kept us all in the loop. Um, I want to say a massive shout out to all the cast members um, of the wrong, um, their family, their friends, and once again, just to shadow. What it, um, if you don't mind, Carlo, I just want to give a massive yes. shout out to my um, to my cousin Holly Killick. Um, she is actually a, um, a, a nurse 
um, for Great Ormond Street, who's just been transferred to the new Nightingale Hospital. Right. And, oh, uh, amazing. Doing a fantastic, a fantastic job. Round of applause. Um, so that's um, that's amazing. So sending one love out to everyone at the NHS, all the key workers, the cast members of this film, everybody in the world, man. Stay safe. Oh, keep yourself. one other thing. Um, I just want to uh, state Sound Boom Entertainment. Links in the description. Website. Uh, links in the description. Check out the website, guys. It will mean a lot to me if you need a party DJ, someone to smash your evening up, rock the place down. Link in the description. You'll also get a chance to meet Paul as well, which is a bonus. So you meet a film star and you get a good gig um, at the same time. Uh, film uh, The Wrong is also in association with Sound Boom uh, Entertainment, which is fantastic. Um, so, yes, brilliant, brilliant stuff. So, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching our video. We've got some more interviews coming this week. Um, I'm not going to tell you who it is until it actually happens, because I don't know who's going to be next. Um, but as always, guys, we love you very, very much. For myself, Paul, hope to see you in the next video, and hopefully... We can get back on it soon uh, with the BTS and behind the scenes of the wrong um, once all this blows over. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll definitely catch you in the next video. Thank you guys. Ciao, ciao. Bye -bye.